Hey guys, I'm Marty, aka Pusher. I'll put my links in the description so you can find my music on SoundCloud. But that was a little bit of my track, Islands, Waves, Caves, and Skies. It's got some samples of Yoshi in there. This is part of the, the future bass, neon, uh, some people call it Australian sound movement. Um, and what you've just heard is most of this track uses sounds from Native Instruments Massive. In fact, the only things that you just heard that weren't made in Massive were the drums and the Yoshi samples. So what I wanted to do was just sort of give a brief introduction tutorial to how to use Native Instruments Massive to get thinking about using these sounds. So I just want to keep this quick, so let's get started. So you open up Massive, the first thing you want to do is hit File New Sound all the time. It resets Massive, it gives you a good initial square wave patch. Which is great. When you're thinking about this kind of music, um, it sort of borrows from Super Nintendo N64 classic video game sounds. And the four oscillators that you want to be using for that kind of music are square and saw and sine and triangle. Um, they use noise as well, but I'm not going to talk about that today. Um, so we'll start with just saw. So I'm setting it to saw. It's good for everything. It's good for chords and basses and leads and everything. Uh, the second thing you want to think about, or actually what you want to do on all your sounds is go to FX2 here and turn on Dimension Expander and set the size all the way down, dry, wet at half. Um, here it is without. Here it is with. And turn the, don't want it to clip. You don't ever want it to be hitting the red here. There, that's better. If it's hitting the red here, it's distorting inside massive and you don't want that to happen. You can make the sound louder later if you want it to be louder, but you don't want it to distort inside massive. So with Dimension Expander on, we can think about shaping our sound. Uh, turn the routing up to series. That means that your oscillators are going to be going through filter 1 and then filter 2. But we're only dealing with filter 1. You could turn filter 2 off if you want. Though the volume's all the way down so you wouldn't hear it anyway. And the mix is all the way up so you're only hearing filter 1. You're going to want to set this to low pass 4. Turn the resonance down for now. Now what this controls is how much high frequency or low frequency is getting through. Really what it's doing is it's cutting off, it's called a cutoff, it cuts off the high frequency sound. Now this is a darker sound and then brighter as you go up. Now any one of these is going to get stale. If this is your chord sound, it's going to get stale over time. You want your sounds to kind of change and evolve and stay interesting as the song progresses. Um, and so you don't want your patches to be stale and stuck in one place. So what we do is take envelope one here, route it to the cutoff. Now whatever this line does is going to be controlled is going to be controlling your cutoff. So if this blue line goes from low point here to high point here, it's going to follow from low point here to high point here. All right. So I'm going to set the level all the way down. Now what's going to happen is I have my attack very low, so it's going to very quickly. It's going to very quickly start at the bottom here and go all the way around to the top. And the decay is set low, so it's going to very quickly go back down. It'll be a pluck sound like this. If we make our attack slower, it's going to get to its high point um, more slowly. If we make the decay higher, it's going to also go back down more slowly. If we make the level higher, it'll sustain. This is what's happening when you're holding the key. It's going to sustain somewhere around the middle here, because this is set at the middle. The lower it goes, the higher it goes. If it's set all the way at the bottom, then when the decay gets to its low point, it'll be all the way at the bottom. It'll make a pluck sound like we had before. The only other thing you can concern yourself really, really with is the release here. Um, the release is what happens when you let go of the key. Right now, you don't hear it though, 
because your fourth envelope controls the actual output of the sound, so you have to turn this release up as well. So you can hear now when I let go of the key, it sort of decays slowly. So you can think about that. Um, now after you've got a sound, let's say uh, our pluck here that I like. I use this a lot, by the way. It's a good, I like it. Is uh, texturing your sound. Let's turn this off for a second. I turn the cutoff off. So now we just have our saw wave with dimension expander on it. We can think about texturing the sound. Go into the voicing tab here. What we're going to do is turn up the unison. Now the unison is when I play a key, right now it's set to one, so it's playing one saw wave for the key that I'm playing. If I set it to two, you can hear it sort of phasing. What's happening now is there are two saw waves being played for every one key that I hit. Three, four, five, six, up to 16. Now, this is a little harsh. It creates this tinny, ugly kind of sound. But if you turn the pitch cutoff on, what it's going to do here is it's going to widen. It's going to sort of create a wider, more textured sound with your new five saw waves. Here it is as a chord. Here it is as a lead. So it's a good way to texture your sounds. Here it is with the square wave. It's great. Uh, I'll go back to the saw here. Uh, here it is with the pluck. Here, I'll turn that down. Here it is without. It's harder to hear with a pluck because you don't get the sustain of it for very long. But it adds a little bit of um, sort of harshness to your sound, which is good sometimes. It can make your sound stand out. If you turn this too far over, it's going to get a little bit difficult to tell what the notes are. But if we turn it maybe one or two ticks over from the left side, it'll make it nice and wide and nice. Um, so we can also do effects. This is one other thing you can think about a lot of guys do, um, especially in the, the Jersey Club side of this type of music. You can put a phaser on. Just to add another dimension to your sound. Here it is without. Here it is with. And you can tailor that, mess with these knobs. Reverb, obviously. Um, and just trying some of the effects to get different effects. The last thing I want to talk about is sort of more of a writing thing. I'm going to clear macro one here. Um, like I was saying, oh, I'll turn the reverb off. Like I was saying earlier, if you have a sound like a pluck, like the average song that I write is two and a half minutes long to three minutes long. Um, in that amount of time, you don't want your sounds to get boring. So we've already done a little bit of shaping our sound here to give it some character. Um, but you also want to think about changing the character of your patch over the course of the song. Uh, one way that I do this is I take a macro and I route it to things that add intensity. So reverb, check this out. So now what's happening here, I'll call this open because we're going to open up our sound, evolve it over time. It sets to my modulation wheel. So that's sort of one trick, but you can also take this same macro and you can send it to things like your decay, which is a good trick. Now listen to what happens. It 
it sort of makes your sound bigger over time. And you can just automate your macro here to do that over time. You can also send it to um, your level. So it sustains a little higher, all the way up even. Turn your reverb up, reverb up maybe. That's too much. And that's one thing that you can do, is evolve your sound over time to increase the intensity of the track without using obvious things like risers um, and just evolving your patch over time in addition to any shaping of it that you do um, yeah so that is sort of the beginnings of how you can approach making the uh, the wavy sounds the neon sounds the future bass sounds whatever you want to call them Australian sound sounds um, and that should get you started thinking about how to do this Try, obviously, some different oscillators, especially sine, triangle, square, saw. You've also got inserts here. You've got all kinds of um, bit crusher and stuff that I didn't even look at. But there are loads of YouTube tutorials. And the best way for you to find your own sound and make your own patches is to mess with all the stuff in, matches, uh, in Massive. Do different tutorials. Try different things. Experiment with stuff. And, um, yeah, just be obsessed with doing it because then you'll do it more. And the only way to really get good at this is to do it a whole lot. I got Massive about two years ago, and I just got a handle on it maybe four months ago. Uh, like to the point where I can really make any patch that I hear. So I'll make some more tutorials later about how to get specific leads or chords or bass or how to write and how to think about the chords and the music theory. But this is just to get you started in Massive. All right. Enjoy.